Do you know Photoshop? If so, you may know the oil paint filter. Oil paint transforms a photograph into a credible hand-rendered painting. Now, I'm not suggesting that you pass your images off as painterly frauds, although who am I to judge? But it's a heck of an effects tool, allowing you to create anything from rough daubs to long, smooth brush strokes. Curiously, oil paint enjoys a crazy checkered history. Over the last dozen or so years, it's been added to Photoshop, relocated, disappeared, and celebrated upon its triumphant return. And most recently, it's been accelerated, which is great. On a modern Mac or PC, it pretty much runs in real time, but it requires a compatible GPU. More on that in a moment. But first, you know those commands at the top of the filter menu? Oil paint isn't there, but it should be. It's that good. Here, let me show you exactly how it works. All right, let's start off with the most boring but essential ingredient if you hope to use the oil paint filter, and that is GPU compatibility. And so notice we have a list of features that require GPU on your video card, by the way, for acceleration. That is, they're going to run faster, such as neural filters. But neural filters do not necessarily need for the GPU to be up and running, whereas there are features that will not work without a GPU, among them oil paint, as well as tree. I just love tree. All right, so here I am back in Photoshop. Let's say I go to the filter menu, choose stylize, and notice right here that oil paint is the only filter in this submenu that is dimmed. Also, were I to go to the render menu, I would see that tree is dimmed, and that is a function of the GPU. So what you need to do is, go, if you encounter this, you probably won't, but if you do, then go to the, the help menu here and choose GPU compatibility. Now, I did that on the Mac, I just want you to see here, and I saw all green, which is great. The graphics processor is compatible, yay. OpenGL's working, so is OpenCL. Metal is checking out. You may not see metal, depending on the age of your Mac. This is a state-of-the-art device I was using. I have more than enough VRAM, as you can see. And the GPU was detected. It's an Apple M1, so first generation metal. That's great. Whereas here on a PC, if I go up to the help menu and choose GPU compatibility, most things are green. That's great. The GLCL DirectX here on the PC under Windows. I have more than enough VRAM. Photoshop is even aware of my GPU. It's an NVIDIA GeForce and so forth. However, my graphics, the red text is very bad. Your graphic processor is turned off in preferences. What in the world is that about? Well, if you see that, here's what you need to do. You need to go to the edit menu here in the PC. On the Mac, you'd go to the Apple menu. Drop down to preferences, which is not nearly so low in the menu on the Mac. And then choose this guy, preferences. Performance is actually the word I'm looking at, so I'll read it correctly as well. Performance. And that's going to bring up this dialog box right here. Notice the detected graphics processor, NVIDIA, NVIDIA GeForce, and so on. You need to see that, by the way. If it can't detect a GPU, then you need to update your driver software, which is going to vary from one, uh, uh, one video card to the next. What you'll need to go, do is go to your vendor's website and check that out. But in any event, mine's detected, so that's good. All I need to do is turn the darn thing on. So I'll just turn on this checkbox, at which point you, you may need to restart Photoshop. In my case... I just turned it off as a demo. So I'll just go ahead and click OK. And now notice if I switch back to that very scary looking dude, I can go to the filter menu, choose stylize, and now I can choose oil paint, at which point I see all of my options inside this dialog box. I can also, by the way, go to the filter menu, choose render, and choose tree. That's going to work out as well, at which point I can automatically create the tree of my choice. That has nothing to do with what I'm talking about in this movie, however, so I'll just go ahead and cancel out. The oil paint filter is divided into two groups of options, brush and lighting. We're going to start with the brush options. And I should mention, by the way, that this scary dude comes to us from the DreamSlime image library, about which you can learn more and get some great deals at dreamslime.com slash deke. In any event, I want to apply oil paint, as with any filter, as an editable smart filter. 
There's just no reason to do otherwise. And so I need to convert this flat background here into a smart object by double clicking on it to first convert it to a, an independent layer. Now I'll click OK. And next, what you want to do, assuming that your rectangular marquee tool is selected up here at the top of the toolbox, so in the top left corner of the screen, right click anywhere inside the image window and choose convert to smart object. All right, now you're ready to roll. What you want to do is go to the filter menu, choose stylize, and then choose oil paint to bring up this dialog box right here. Now there's two ways to preview your changes. One is to drag around, that's a fool's errand by the way, drag around inside that in dialog box preview. You're better off clicking inside the image window in order to center the area you want to preview. But you're even better off just turning on the preview checkbox, assuming that your system is fast enough to handle it. All right, so here are the brush options. There's four of them and all. Stylization is really br the length of the brush stroke. So if you crank stylization down to its minimum, you're gonna get daubs of paint, D-A-U-B, daubs of paint, just like you're daubing at the canvas. And you can create bigger daubs if you want to by uh, cranking that value up ever so slightly, or you can create long brush stro strokes by increasing that stylization value all the way up to 10.0, by the way, that is the maximum. Cleanliness, I'll go ahead and crank stylization down for a moment. Cleanliness is really grittiness. And so at low values, you're gonna get a lot of grit. And so notice that we are maintaining all of his, what, what do you call that? Stubble. I guess. And so if we want to keep the stubble, I'll turn the preview checkbox back on, then we want a low cleanliness value like so. However, if you want to clean things up, then you can smooth out your brush strokes by increasing this cleanliness value. Again, all the way up to 10.0 if you like. I think that's a little too clean, so I'll take that value down to, let's say, 8. Scale is going to determine the thickness of the brush strokes. Now, if you're creating for screen, something online, then you can easily get away with low scale values, and that's going to give you these very thin brush strokes. They're not going to hold up for high resolution printing, however, in which case what you'd want to do is increase that scale value so you have much thicker brush strokes like so. And don't worry about the fact that they're all scrapey looking. That's a function of lighting. We'll come to those options in just a moment. And next we have bristle detail. How many bristles we're actually seeing. And so if you take this value down, this is the most subtle of the controls, then you're not going to see your bristles. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on, let's say this region of his cheek right here. Notice that it's almost like we're painting with a palette knife at this point. Whereas if you increase the brush detail all the way up to its maximum of 10.0 once again, then you are going to see the individual bristles. It is a subtle modification. However, I want to make that clear. All right, so I'm going to increase the scale value to 10.0. Might as well go for some really thick brush strokes. And I'm also going to take the stylization value up to 9.0. It'll go ahead and send it to the zoom by pressing control zero or command zero on the Mac. And let's say I don't want that many bristle details. I'll take this value down to let's say 2.0. I don't know. It's a subtle control. Once again, let's take the scale value down. Why don't we? Why do I keep changing my mind? Because I want to show you, I'm going to click okay. And notice now that we have an editable smart filter right here listed in the layers panel, which means that if I change my mind, which I'm going to do right now, all I have to do is double click on oil paint and that will bring back the dialog box with all of my settings intact. At which point, you know, let's take scale up a little bit. And let's just crank that bristle detail value up to its maximum setting. After which point I'll click OK in order to accept that effect. Now let's talk about the lighting values. I'll go ahead and switch over to our evil Sith Lord so far, and I'll double click on the words oil paint here inside the layers panel to revisit our last applied settings. And here are the lighting values, by the way. Pretty straightforward, actually. You can change the angle of the light source just by dragging around in here. You can also 
dial in a number if you prefer, or you can press the up arrow key or the down arrow key, all kinds of stuff that you can do. I think you can even, yeah, you could just put your cursor inside that little value there and use the scroll wheel on your mouse in order to change the value. And we also have shine. So shine's pretty low by default. It's the amount of shine that we're seeing on the paint. However, you can take it way up if you like. It gets pretty ridiculous at a certain point. It goes all the way up to 10, by the way, which to me is just tasteless. But whatever, you know, up to you. I'll take it down a little bit and I'll just show you how it compares with some of the other brush settings. For example, I could take the stylization value down now in order to create some very brightly lit, I guess, high contrast in any event, daubs of paint, daubs of paint is how you pronounce that word, I believe. And things can get unclean as well. So you can, you know, have a blast just combining all these values to your heart's content. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take the bristle value down to zero this time around so that we have a kind of palette knife effect. And I'll crank the scale value all the way up to 10. So we've got these very big daubs. And I want to keep things clean, so I'm just going to dial in a value of 8, let's say. And I'll set the stylization to 2, so we're still looking at daubs of paint. And the shine value I will take down. This is just too much. I'll take it down to 4, let's say. That looks pretty good to me. At which point I'll click OK, but I'm still working with an editable smart filter. I want to highlight that. Imagine if we weren't. We would just have to start over every single time we want to try new settings. But because we thought to create a smart object in advance, I can just double click on oil paint to bring up that dialog box once again. And I could say, you know what, lighting? No, I don't want lighting. I'm just going to turn that checkbox off and all lighting goes away. So that is another option. But I want to keep the lighting. So I'm going to go ahead and click cancel and it all comes back. And that those are a few different ways to take advantage of the oil paint filter. Newly GPU accelerated in Photoshop 2022 and moving forward. I just want to ask you not to harp, but you know those commands at the top of the filter menu? When's the last time you used adaptive wide angle or lens correction, both of which are handled better by camera raw? or vanishing point for that matter, I say yank them out and put oil paint in. Who's with me? Comment down below. And by the way, thanks for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe. And if you're looking for more videos, including one in which I show you how to combine oil paint with another art filter, style transfer, which is wicked cool, then check out patreon.com slash deke now. And visit my own deke.com. I'm Deke McClellan. This is Photoshop Now.